it's summer, so here's another fan video. This is a probably 20-year-old window fan, presenting with a couple problems. One of the two fan motors spins slower than the other, and after a little while of running on high, it will stop running for a few minutes, presumably some sort of thermal breaker. On the low setting, it will run indefinitely, though I think it still has some issues. The fan's been in use in a house by the ocean for the better part of a decade, so there's a fair bit of corrosion on it. Might need HD and full screen to see it, but in the lower right corner there's the kilowatt on the amp setting, so you can see how much current this thing's pulling. I click it onto the low setting. Pretty obvious that this fan spins much slower than this one. If I click it onto the high setting, it's a bit less obvious, but still the case. And it pulls around a little less than twice that, at just under one amp. Little timer will give a good indication of how long it's been, even after I cut the camera in and out. We're about five minutes in. The current has dropped from 0.99 down to 0.83, and, unusually, the motor that's spinning at normal speed is getting too hot. That's already at 90 Celsius on the very outside of the windings. This partner that's going slow is only at 34 or so. A bit shy of 11 minutes in, current continues to drop. Hot spot on the fast motor is up to 117 Celsius. Slow motor at 43. The fan just quit on its own with a quiet little click. Both fans stopped. Current is zero. We just crossed 15 minutes. Slow motor. That reached equilibrium in the upper 40s. Fast motor, now that it no longer has airflow, is at 135.6. On a closer sniff, it is starting to make the burning smell. Here's a quick look at the wiring of the switch. The white wires with no stripes are the neutrals, and those go straight through to the neutral wire of the main sleeve. The hot side can be connected to either the white with black stripe, which is a low speed tap, or the white with red stripe, which is a high speed tap. I've bypassed the switch and wired the overheating motor directly to the mains lead. 0.34 amps, a bit less than I would expect. I think I might have confused which wires were the high speed and low speed taps. Swapped the wires around. Let's try this again. There we go. That's about more like what I'd think to see. Low speed wired up on the slow fan only. If you haven't already, put it on HD and click it to full screen because this might be hard to see otherwise. On the hot motor, the difference between the common terminal and the low speed tap is 36 ohms. The difference between the common and the high speed is 27, and the difference between high speed and low speed is expected 9 ohms. Things get interesting on the motor that's going slow. The slow motor appears to have an open common. It's open circuit between common and high, and between common and low, and only the between high and low shows any measurable resistance. Again, it's the expected 9 ohms. To see how the slow motor can run at all, we need to look at the wiring of the entire fan. The commons just join together in parallel and go straight to the neutral wire of the main sleeve. The live wire goes through the switch, which can be off, high, or low, and then goes on to the taps on the motors. These taps are in parallel, high to high, low to low, and that's on the load side of the switch. Here's a look at the current path, assuming both motors are healthy and the switch is in the high position. 
power comes up, splits off, goes to the high tap of one motor, through the coil, and to neutral. Same thing with the other motor. Through the high tap, through the coil, and then to common, to neutral. Now let's see what happens when there is a break in the common terminal of the second motor. Some of you with double E backgrounds might have noticed these motors are wired much like auto transformers, and that's exactly what's happening. The pour overheating motor is having to backfeed the slow motor through the difference between the high speed and the low speed taps, indicated by these red arrows. This causes the hot motor to draw far more power than it was ever designed to handle, especially this set of coils here, which was never meant to carry that much current to backfeed another motor. Likewise, it explains why the slow motor has extremely low power and can't spin very fast. The red multimeter is connected between the high speed and low speed taps of the previously overheating motor. If I plug it in, about 43 volts AC between those two taps. The motor draws 0.76 amps, which is about to be expected for how strong it is. The slow motor is likewise connected to the mains, but obviously it's not turning because it's open circuit. Watch what happens when I connect the red stripe wire, the low speed tap, from the broken motor to the low speed tap of the intact motor. When I hook it up, the voltage sags quite a bit, because it was never meant to be run like this. The intact motor slows down, and the broken motor starts to turn. I let go, voltage comes back up, and things are back to normal. You can also notice the current goes up quite a bit too. I've removed the failed motor, and the good motor has now been running for about 45 minutes. The temp stabilized, hasn't made any burning smells or shown any other signs of distress. The coil of the motor has stabilized at around 84 Celsius, and the cores at a perfectly reasonable 53. There's the fan, all put back together. Bad motor removed, good motor wired in. Thanks for watching.